Welcome to this video. We are going to show one final graph that we will use when dealing with the photoelectric, photoelectric effect, and then we will compare just very briefly the three graphs we've learned and what they all mean. Here is the equation that describes the energy exchange between one photon, whose energy is HF, and one electron. To find the maximum kinetic energy of the electron, you take the photon energy, but the maximum kinetic energy is what's left over after the photon breaks the electron free from the surface. So you have to subtract away the work function, which is the minimum amount of energy needed to separate an electron from the surface. The difference between the two, or the amount left over, is what the electron gets as kinetic energy. So we can make a graph plotting on the y-axis maximum kinetic energy, and on the x-axis we can plot frequency, and we get something that looks like this. The y-intercept is negative phi, and the slope is Planck's constant. Now, here's the equation again that we just graphed. We know there's a relationship between maximum kinetic energy and stopping voltage at the collector plate. The relationship is this. If the fastest electrons are going even faster, then we will have to pile up more negative charges and produce a larger stopping voltage in order to stop the faster electron. In other words, the larger the maximum kinetic energy, the larger the stopping voltage must be. Here's the equation which says the exact same thing. The maximum kinetic energy is directly proportional to the stopping voltage and is the stopping voltage times the charge of an electron. So let's combine these two equations. I'm going to write the top again, but in place of ek max, I will put what it equals, charge of the electron times the stopping voltage. If I divide the entire left side by the charge of an electron, and the entire right side by the charge of an electron, then I get this. And let's box this equation. This is a second equation we can use to produce a graph. Again, how did I get to this equation? I just combined this equation, the energy exchange equation for one electron and one uh, photon. I combined it with the stopping voltage equation, and then I rearranged to get this. So here's that equation again from the uh, last slide. The only difference is I've used parentheses now around the first factor, and I've shown the subtraction as adding a negative. We can produce a graph then with stopping voltage on the y-axis and frequency on the x-axis. And it's going to look very similar to what we saw before, something like this. We can extrapolate the line down. The y-intercept in this case is going to be negative phi over charge of an electron. And we can see that, of course, easily by comparing to y, plus m y equals mx plus y-intercept. Then we can also say the slope of this graph would be this part, this factor, which is Planck's constant over the charge of an electron. And so now we can use this graph as well uh, to solve problems. The last thing that I want to show is how this graph on the right is related to the earlier graph that we've seen of 
current at the collector as a function of uh, the voltage at the collector. If we were to do many, many different experiments, right? let's say we did an experiment where the frequency was uh, kind of low, and when the frequency is low, we have a low stopping voltage. And it looked like this, the graph. Then we did another experiment where the frequency was a little higher, but the current was the same. Then we did another where the frequency was even higher, but the current was the same again. If we were to take all of these data points, and this one down here was low frequency, if we were to plot the frequency value on the x-axis and the stopping voltage value on the y-axis, we would produce this line with stopping voltage shown as a function of frequency.